So John, you are the captain of the Freedom, uh, the second vessel that will uh, approach Gaza. Could you tell us uh, where you are in relation to Gaza currently and just give us a sense of who is on the vessel? Who are these people? Where do they come from? How many are they? Uh, we are currently um, about 300 miles, a little less, west of Gaza. Um, we're actually uh, staking at Alexandria because of the direction of the wind. We're at the moment 12 people on board, comprising two journalists, um, I think seven British activists, myself, and Canadian. So we have a, a Spaniard as well, and a Frenchman. Uh, we range in age from the Elvis, who is a Swedish long-time activist, and her, I guess, by 70. Uh, she's a uh, very well-known activist and veterinarian from Sweden, looking after our health, obviously. We're very lucky to have her. And the youngest, um, I'm going to guess, is uh, another Swede, a young activist well-known to her work in uh, serving um, refugees in, uh, in, in um, the current refugee crisis uh, in the Greece and uh, that region. Now, uh, as I understand, you are all aware, the Al-Auda was intercepted on Sunday. That's the lead vessel of the Freedom Flotilla. It was intercepted, hijacked, I think would be a more accurate term, in international waters by the Israeli military. Uh, two of the people who were on that vessel have been freed. The others apparently remain incarcerated uh, in Israel where they were taken against their will. One of those two people, an Israeli human rights activist named Zohar Regev Chamberlain, and I know you know her well, has uh, reported that despite the claims of the Israeli government that the interception of the vessel occurred peacefully, uh, soldiers actually struck and tasered uh, members of the crew and some passengers. Um, what do you anticipate is going to happen when you approach uh, the territorial waters of Gaza, and what have you done to prepare for this? Um, I have very little other news about that, so you know far more than I do. So my anticipation is based uh, not just on the little I know about Malaga, uh, but also on what has happened in previous uh, capture. My anticipation is that the Israeli government you know, try very hard to make the Israeli Navy look uh, expert. Uh, I know this not to be true in other instances, and I won't be surprised if it turns out not to be true. And and what is what is the mood on the vessel right now? How how do the how do the crew and passengers feel about their impending encounter with the Israeli military? Well, it may be uh, odd. Uh, to hear this, but I can say with confidence that um, we have passed what in the marathon business you call the 30-second mile, so your spirits are lowest and you wonder why you're doing this. We have passed that point, um, and so we're all very blank. We uh, literally have figured in the spiritual. Um, we really want to uh, get this last one done, see it as quickly as possible to Gaza. So we are in a very good mood. And we are determined to take our best chance to break through to the port of Gaza and demonstrate physically, emotionally, to the Palestinians that we will keep banging on their prison door until it is opened by Western governments operating uh, diplomatically this country on the Israeli government. Well, John, we, we wish you and your fellow crew and passengers a swift and safe uh, voyage to Gaza, and uh, I hope that we'll have the opportunity to talk to you again once you've arrived at your ultimate destination, whatever it, whatever it may be, and uh, are in a position to speak to us. Thank you, Dimitri, and, and thanks to all your listeners, and please, listeners, this is the time to start calling the elected representative. Thank you very much, and good night. Thank you, John. Safe, safe travels.